Well, hello and welcome to the third episode of Pantry Party. Uh, I did bring a prop today because I am getting more experienced as you see this is the third episode. So I've decided to bring a disco ball, right? Because here's the deal. Nothing says party like a, a disco ball. So uh, as you may know, or maybe not, maybe you're new to the show, uh, this is where we're going to take a sneak peek into someone's pantry, fridge and freezer, in a non-judgmental way. That's the number one rule, okay? Um, and we're going to learn a little bit about the person. We're going to figure out uh, why they want to be on pantry party. And then we're going to end the end of the day. It's a very simple concept here. We're going to try and make a meal out of whatever they have in their pantry. Pantry party. And so, uh, oh, goody. I have, the guest is already here. Uh, Isabel Smith is in. Um, and we're going to get started. I mean, talk about it. I'm a pro. I have props. I got our guest in right away. Hi. Oh, my gosh. How are you? I'm good. The camera's lower than I thought it would be, so I'm just going to prop it up here. Give me a second. Give, give me a little prop. Um, here's the deal. You officially are the first person on Pantry Party that is not named Gina. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number two, you are officially the first dietitian on Pantry Party. So this makes it officially dietitian on dietitian. Bam. Ah, love it. So I happy to be here. So fun. Well, hey, thanks for uh, agreeing to be on Pantry Party as our third guest. Um, I did feel like the need to wear my neon sweater for you because you are such a bright light in this world. <laughs> oh, thank you. You so really are. You. are. So are you. Thanks, so babe. You, so are you. Right back at you. Like so, all right. So here's the deal. So Pantry Party started as a very simple idea is we all have a ton of stuff in our pantries and yeah. probably... Uh, not maybe our usual stuff because we went to the store, aka me. I went to the store. My usual stuff wasn't there. Yeah. Um, or we don't have very much in our pantry at all. And we're like, yeah. I want to try and get a couple more days out of the groceries I have. So uh, what can I do with the slim pickings I have? So that's sort of what we've been doing with Pantry Party. Um, you are my first dietitian. And why I'm excited about this is because then I'm not like, you know, having the whole burden of trying to figure this out. Uh, I wanted to have an expert on to sort of give uh, your two cents too about like how you're preparing for this, some of your favorite meals. Um, but before we begin, let's like officially introduce you. Okay. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself sure. and like what you do? So I'm Isabel. Um, you already know that. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm based in New York and I'm functionally and integratively trained. So that means I help people with food, but also with, you know, health in general. I end up being kind of like a health detective, helping people kind of get to the root cause of what's causing whatever they're experiencing. That could simply be hanging on to extra weight. That could be insomnia, anxiety, allergies, all sorts of stuff. Um, so I use food first, but I also like to use a lot of other stuff as well. Um, and then when I'm not helping patients and clients, you can usually find me in Central Park hanging out with my dogs. <laughs> I love that. I love when people give like that two cents of like even on their CVs or their bios, it's like, and when I'm not being a registered dietitian nutritionist, I enjoy long walks on the beach must along love dogs. with, you know, oh, hey, must love dogs. That maybe that's why we've become very fast friends. So Isabel and I met uh, when I was in New York. I mean, I think one time. One. And yeah. I, uh, I kind of was like eavesdropping. Let's just be honest. I was like creeping <laughs> around. And I was like eavesdropping. I was like, she sounds so interesting. I think I'm going to go insert myself in that conversation. And we've been fast friends ever since. And it was like, it was like immediate. I feel like you and I like started talking. We were like, we agree on that and that and that. And we were both like, tell me more about this and tell me more about that. And it just was yeah. very easy. And, I, yeah. and I'm so grateful. I, it's just wonderful. Makes me it, is, it is. And I think part of what I respect so much about you is that you're so open-minded, right? So that you are able to take in opinions from not just the dietitian community, but from all sorts of communities, um, you know, investigate, do your research, do your due diligence and bring parts of it into your practice to be the holistic practitioner that you are. I just, I think that is so cool. Thank you. You know what? Yeah. We're all lucky to, to do what we love. And I think it's, you know, everybody having different perspectives, especially in nutrition 
is really important. I think one, one, you know, single minded thinking is kind of where dietitians go wrong. I think it's where medical practitioners go wrong. We need to incorporate, you know, something that somebody tells us that may not have evidence based medicine behind it because it feels good for their body or whatever. It's just important that we listen, especially right, right now, especially right now we need to listen. I think that could not be more well said, especially right now. Um, and so, you know, when you think about, uh, you know, two experts here talking about a pantry, right? I never thought I would be doing a show about uh, pantries. This is something I had thought about 20 years ago. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, you know, I sort of fell out of this idea, although always I enjoy sneaking in on my girlfriend's pantries, <laughs> fridge, and freezer to like see what they have. It's kind always of like- were here. I know. Well, that's the beauty of this is that I'm going to make you take me uh, to your pantry, fridge, and freezer. <laughs> exactly. I like your, but the number one rule on pantry party is no judgment. So I have no judgment. You have no judgment and nobody can have any judgment. Okay, and like at it. some point pantry party has got to go into my cabinet and I might have you help me with an issue that I have. I, love that. I, I have, AKA my husband, uh, over purchased black beans. So, we couldn't find garbanzo beans, which I really, I enjoy garbanzo beans. So I feel like then the list just became like, let's get so many black beans. So yeah. maybe later we'll talk about your favorite ways to use black beans. But for now, after we get to know a pantry party guest, um, <laughs> this is when we do our non-judgmental sort of sneak peek into fridge, pantry, freezer. Okay. But also, like, if there's anything going bad, or if yeah. there's anything that you, I mean, even though you're an expert, that you're like, you know what, I've literally had this in my cabinet or my freezer for so long, I would really like to strategize together about, like, how to use it. That's our jumping off point. Is anything okay. going to go bad, or is uh, anything just been lingering that you don't know what to do with? So, you're going to laugh at my tiny New York City kitchen and I love fridge. it. And you're also going to notice that half of my fridge is dog, freezer is dog food. So, <laughs> I so, love it. So when this all started happening, I was like, do we feed us or do we feed the dogs? And I was like, oh, we can't starve the dogs. So dog. there's some human food and then there's a lot of dog food. So, I love um, it. I love yes. it. That again, why we're fast <laughs> friends is because our fur babies are literally everything to us. Um, how did you go about uh, stocking up? Like, you know, like we're all saying like, you know, it's not a panic. There's enough food. They're just trying to get it on the shelves. You know, you don't have to overbuy. But like, how did you, did you have a plan? Like what was your strategy this whole time? So I think it was about a week ago when people like really, well, actually I had clients texting me and emailing me like three weeks ago mm -hmm. being like, I'm buying, you know, this is going to be a massive problem. And I kind of was like, meh. I don't think I need to run out yet. And then suddenly I was like, I need to go. So, um, you know, that feeling like I need to go is this, this time it was mm -hmm. towards the grocery store. Um, and so dietitian, <laughs> can we warn every viewer? I mean, there's a lot of dietitian viewers, but like warning, you get two dietitians in a room, poop jokes are bound to happen. They're going to come. Um, <laughs> So I live next door to Whole Foods here in the city, in New York, and um, which is a blessing and a curse. And so- Us too, us too, right by it, right next door. I, it's like, it's become criteria for finding a new apartment. It's like, if it's not next door to Whole Foods, we just can't even look. Yeah. So I went over, I think it was like a week ago, and I did like a, I did like a, mo like a larger shop than I usually do. And I definitely at first found myself putting more like beans and pasta and grains and to be honest, those are, they're not things that I like usually eat a lot of. Um, and so I was kind of like, I was monitoring myself, like while doing it being like, what am I buying and how much of it am I buying it? And like, am I even, is this stuff even interesting to me to be buying? I was really conscious of that. So I started with pantry staples. And then what I quickly realized was that um, actually the things that were flying off the shelves were the you know, shelved items and not the fresh items like freezer foods. There's no frozen vegetables to be found, except I love frozen cauliflower rice and nobody seems to want any frozen cauliflower rice. So Isabel's winning. I have all the frozen <laughs> cauliflower rice you could ever want. and nobody wants gluten-free pasta. So I have, yeah, like awesome finds. Um, you know, I also stocked up on like 
tur ground ground organic turkey and I happened to have some frozen fish in my freezer. So um, I did some like staples. And then as I've gone, I think last Friday was the I stood in the line for an hour and a half at Whole Foods wow. here, which was like actually kind of unnerving because you're sort of like, you know, you're like this. And everybody's got their gloves and their N95 masks on and I'm not wearing either, you know, but watching it, you know, everybody's like, like practically like, like they're licking their gloves and then like touching their phone. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, you are not helping yourself. Uh -uh. Um, but it was I definitely, I came back and like sprayed myself with every like, you know, herbal remedy that I have. <laughs> um, and I think on that, on that shop, I got more fresh food and then. What I found is that, like, everybody's left New York City. I don't know if, if you found the same thing in Chicago. People are no. just, like, mass exodus. Like, people went to the Hamptons. People went upstate. People went, like, everywhere. So now there's not a lot of people here. And there's plenty of food. So I just, like, I bought food for dinner last night, yesterday, when I went. And I was like, I'm going to, like, freeze the stuff I have in my fridge that I want to just make sure I have enough of. And then I'm just going to buy fresh food and eat the fresh stuff so that I don't have to go into my kind of like stockpile, um, which as you'll see, isn't even that enormous um, okay. because I'm trying to eat more fresh foods. Admittedly, I'm eating a lot of gluten-free toast at the moment because toast and soup is like all of a sudden my jam. It feels very good. Well, so, okay, just to, to paraphrase and sort of like put in summary you aren't necessarily making sure that you're limiting your trips to the grocery store anymore, that you're sort of like, you're going, you're taking precautions, like washing your hands before and after, but you aren't necessarily um, decreasing your, your frequency. No. And like yesterday I was, I had like a chunk of time in the middle of the day between clients. And so I was like, I'm going to go for a walk, but let me just, I wanted to see what, cause Paul, my yeah. boyfriend has been going instead of me more frequently. And I was like, I want to see what it looks like. Like, what's available? Like, you know, what what can I find? And I walked in and there was nobody there. And I was like, shopping right now. Well, um, especially because you just had been in Whole Foods and had to stand in that hour and a half line. I bet that was a pleasant surprise. I was so, like, you know, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the recommendations, right? It's like going in off hours, washing your hands before and after. Um, and then like you said, is, uh, you know, not being afraid of, if your favorite stuff isn't there, this may be an opportunity to say, wait a second, I can try something else. Um, for us, uh, one of the things that I, I forget how much I love these, um, just wraps, right? So whatever kind, so whether it be gluten-free wraps or sprouted whole grain wraps, whatever, because they make pizza in a pinch, they make burritos, they make healthy quesadillas. Um, and they were all gone, no wrappies. Um, so like I've had to get more creative because that's sort of been my like crutch. Like when people are like, what's your go-to? It's like, those are my things. So I've had to like really expand. So um, I think part of what I like Pantry Party for is like pushing the creativity on stuff that like you said, I have canned beans in my cabinet that I don't usually even eat. I don't, do I know what to do with these? Like now that everyone has 12 cans of them. Right, you know? what, are we doing? what are we doing with them? Um, and also, it's actually, it's funny that you're talking, you're asking me that question, because at two, I'm going live on my Instagram with somebody who does colonics and lymphatic drainage. And we're talking about constipation because, uh, like, everybody eating all these beans and grains and pantry foods, nobody's pooping. So I, I feel like, doesn't that mean that they're just not drinking water? Because those are some pretty high fiber foods. It's like, yeah. what the heck? They Your increase fiber without the water. Yeah, so not better drink, drink up, kids. Drink up. Still. Um, um, so, all right, without further ado, can you please show us all right, all right. your pantry, yes. fridge, and freezer? And I love that I get to see a New Yorker uh, set up, right? Because it is very different. Just like yeah. downtown Chicago, which is where I live, yeah. right, is very different than, like, my suburban friends who have, like, big, glorious things, you know? So, anyway, this is fun. I used to have a glorious, large kitchen, and then we traded it for a bigger apartment, and we lost the kitchen. And, love that. Um, so, now we have a tiny kitchen. So, um shamefully hang on this is my pantry from top to bottom that's great no all I that's have. so cute i love that wallpaper too by the Isn't way it fun so, so cute. um and so then my fridge which i cleaned off the magnets off the top but not off the bottom so oh cute off, look at you that's like what most of us are doing anyway we're like <laughs> professional on the top and then we're all wearing our jammies on oh, the I bottom have, right no. i have 
Uggs and black spandex on the bottom. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh my god. So all right. let me let turn me this peek. around. Ooh. All right. So ooh, look how scary this is. So when you have a tiny pantry, oh my gosh, oh, good to me. I mean, I'm not judging earlier. good or bad, but like it, I like how I the think if I had known we were touring actually versus products, I probably would have tidied it. But oh yeah, no, we're getting we're we're getting in. So getting in. so here's what we have. What okay, we have, I'm turn you around. I'm gonna pull some things out. Anything so, in there that you are like you can? Or here's the thing. Now that you're a dietitian, see other. Uh, people who've been on the show, it's either something that's gone bad or yeah. go and not gone bad. And then I force them to use it, but like <laughs> going it. bad, right. Um, or something they don't know how to use or they want to use and they haven't quite figured out. But maybe for you, because you're a dietitian, it's sort of like, you know, is there any sort of tips of things that you like, you yeah. love, 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 like meals that are your go-to? I have food in the fridge I need help with. So we'll, we'll do that. Oh, when we good. Get to the okay. Fridge. okay. Um, in the pantry, I would love some creative ways to include rice because I just make rice and I like just use rice. And I think in this, and I have a nut allergy. So for me, I'm not making a lot of like rice salads. Um, so I'd love some ideas for like easy ways to like flavor rice. I have a quick question. Yeah. I feel like uh, you have all the cauliflower rice in New York <laughs> and you have rice. Do you make 50-50 rice? No, I need to. I saw that the other day on your Instagram. 50-50 rice that's is it. the best because you know what? I am like a cauliflower rice girl, but that little bit of regular rice like it's ups so the good. ante of like yeah. mixing those yeah. together. Um, I love that. So anyway, I'm uh, first I, sure, I feel like your assignment is 50-50 rice. 50-50 rice. <laughs> the other thing I have, I'm just looking at my pantry here. Oh, it's too much dog food. And do you do things, uh do you do any like um, the top, brown the top rice stir fries? The top looks better. The top looks oh, better. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. I mean, I'm not um. judging cute or not cute, but I like, <laughs> I do. I mean, I love, I love it. Um, it's, you know, do, do I do, do any fried, any fried rice? I do sometimes. I, we, we use the coconut aminos that are in my fridge. I love yes. coconut aminos. Um, good tip. And, that's a good tip. And I tip. like them. They're a little sweeter than soy sauce. And that's why, and, and when you have a soy allergy, you just find some. Oh, um. Oh, there you are. So, um, oh, I went. I, it's just because I'm a professional and I have phone calls coming in during the live. I mean, there you go. I mean, I'll I'll work on that. Just so you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, um, so I like to use the coconut aminos. I do do a fried rice sometimes. Yes. I feel like I mean, if I'm going to try and shove you in the direction, right? of us, we're trying to meal storm together, but I have been craving, I just want to shift my craving onto you, a good, like, light fried rice. Oh, that sounds good. I yeah. mean, anyway. Hey, well, it's a, good one, rice? it's a good one right now. Put oh. my handy dandy window still. It's a good one right now because um, what I like about that is that people have frozen veggies available. Yeah. Yeah. So like peas, it's carrots, point. corn, like honestly, it's not, it's not traditional, but you can put whatever you have in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like you can get frozen cauliflower rice or there's plenty of fresh, uh, cauliflower available at the moment, to be honest, in various places. Now I've heard from clients and friends that like in certain locations, you can't even buy chicken. Um, so you could do, you could make with regular rice, you could do a regular rice, like stir, like, um, fried rice with any frozen veggies you have in either soy sauce or um, like coconut aminos. And I'm a big, I think your tip on coconut aminos is great. I'll show you the one I like. Okay, let's yeah. go to my fridge. Yeah. My fridge is jammed because again, it's tinier than I want it to be, but let's take a look. So lots of produce. All oh, right. I love that. So I'll oh my gosh, you it's happening. so oh, beautiful. Also, we like this. Have you had this blood orange cider? We, we no. like this. Um, oh, so in my drawer here, um, this is what Ooh. I need help with. I have a lot of broccoli slaw. Oh, have, that's one of my favorite things ever is broccoli slaw. So I need help because I had to stick some in the freezer. We've got I feel like this is leaning into our fried rice thing. Have you ever had <laughs> that cooked into fried rice? It is oh, no. amazing. There we go. There oh we my go. gosh. All right. It's, that's what I I'm love do. that because you know what? You know why I think that's so good? I'm a big believer um, in that 30 plants a week concept, right? Yeah, yeah. So for gut diversity, 
Yeah. And that is like a handful of that. Oh, clean hand, please. A clean <laughs> hand in there. Um, that is like gives you, I mean, how many vegetables are in there? Like five different ones. Oh, it's a lot. This is like, yeah. and, and what I love about this stuff, oh, you're going to beep at me now. Um, what I love Top about tip. this stuff is that um, broccoli slaw that is the stalks. And so it's a bit like helpful with, with detoxifying estrogen. Also, if you have regular broccoli, do you ever use the stalk in your broccoli? I try. Okay, here's what I will. I will say this. I have no, not just for any other health reason, but for like the no waste movement. Yeah. You know, I have started doing way lower on the stock. So I wouldn't say that I'm at a full 100% of the stock. Yeah. I would tell you though, I'm going to give myself a 70%, 70, no, I'm proud of 60. you for that. Okay, 60. Just like, I'm going to say it right. 60% of the stock. And I just cut it really thin, sort of like the Brocco slaw that, or the slaw that you have. I like to steam the the stock when I do when I steam the rest of it because it it like ends up tasting pretty much the same like it's really yummy. So if you see me steaming cauliflower, I mean or not cauliflower but broccoli, I'll do the use the stem. So thank you for that. That is, I mean, a great tip. Like if we're keeping track of all these tips, right? Don't forget to get that slaw. I love that. If you are doing a, a head of cauliflower, do you don't have to get just the crown. Get the whole head. Use yeah. the stock. Somebody yeah. even said that they freeze it and use it in soups, which I think is fabulous. Yeah. Um, and then I like, you know, co I have coconut aminos at my house too. And I agree with you. It's just like that sweeter flavor. And for anybody who's gluten-free, right, it's great. What's, and a uh, bit less sodium. There's a I bit was just going to say, sodium. and, you know, yeah. what's the deal is like, you know, people are always looking for like little ways to not overdo it on salt. Um, okay, so your so back to my open looks so fresh <laughs> oh my god so look at that. so here but, but go back to my drawer so i have leftover i have leftover excuse my unmanicured nails can't go to the nail oh, salon yeah. now me neither uh, girl cauliflower that's cooked i've got butternut squash that's cooked i'm gonna make a soup out of that Yum. i've got some brussels um i've got my my slaw and then in the fridge there's the dog food yeah um we've got romaine lettuce and carrots and cider we've got leftover i put my there's chicken and fish here um leftover excuse my plastic container um salmon a small amount of celery juice uh oh, fun. Cabbage, cabbage and we've got cauliflower and then up top we've got same thing cauliflower at this stuff which goes on my toast which i love <laughs> Lots of celery. Wow. You have so much fresh stuff. Now, let me ask you a straight up, this is a real question from my heart. Yeah. Do you, two, actually I have two that have just bubbled up from inside of my heart. <laughs> um, do you have anxiety about having that much fresh food? And number two, do you have a plan for all of that fresh food? Yeah. I'll juice it. If I, if I'm not, if I don't need it, I'll juice it. So yesterday I juiced a little bit of this in with some celery. It was disgusting, but yeah, I, that's how you know it's working, right? It's like, I, like that's, <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's um, like, that's what people say all the time. They're like, I don't like it. I'm like, eat it. You know, you know, it's working if it tastes like that. <laughs> Somebody is asking you a question about oh, dog food. We use farmer's dog. We love farmer's dog. Oh, um, nice. We love them. And you know, it's great and it comes once a month and um the dogs love eating fresh food so they were like not now they like kick the bowl aside if you try and give them that the, they're like ah, you know we don't want that <laughs> hey i have a quick question for you have you thought about becoming a uh, spokesperson totally you should, that. and put yeah and put the dog on there kicking the bowl of the other food and like only eating the the right dog food like i'm open for opportunities so i mean they, believe know, me my mind is like working a mile a minute here and uh I We love them. We sure. love them. Oh, I want to show you the door of my fridge actually. Oh, obviously. Because I need the to see door that. of my fridge. So the door of my fridge is actually really organized. It's so beautiful. redeeming myself. I actually stuck all the berries in the door because I had space and because they they actually do better when they're not in like very cold temperature. So the inside of the fridge is colder and the outside like the door is like you don't want to put anything that's going to go bad in the door. So pro tip, uh, pro tip, be on. That's fabulous. So these purple sweet potatoes that didn't have another space for them. Oh my gosh. Got some. What are you going to do with those? Eat them. <laughs> Wait, like, like kind of like uh, wedges. Oh, they're already <laughs> cooked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. that's fun. Look mm -hmm. at that. Hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen squeezable tahini? 
Once. Okay, because I have sque a squeeze bottle of tahini that on a potato tastes like have fun. <laughs> so it really does. I need to get some of that. Yes, you do, babe. And be like, yeah, because then you can go in and just give a squeeze, squeeze. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask you this: What is like with all that produce in there? What mm -hmm. is like the plan? Like, how, how do you how do you cope with all that? <laughs> so soup. Um, the other night I made a really easy, um, like, and I have all my onions here on the, on the oh, counter. Okay. Um, so I did like a super easy, um, onion, celery, carrot with some broth, um, uh, cauliflower rice actually, and ground turkey and like actually just threw it in a pot and made a ton of it. And so I'll use a lot of it for soup. Um, juicing, I like making mashes, so I'll just steam a bunch of vegetables together and then mash them together what? Um, in the blender. It's so good. And, what's, so good. Uh, and you just like eat it sort of like mashed potato. Yes, absolutely delicious. Question, um, have you ever posted this? Wait, I have a question. Um, Is my audio for you sound horrible? No. Oh, okay, good. It sounds what? bad on my end. Really? Um, what's it sound like? Yeah. Like a robot. I sound like a robot to myself. Oh, you don't sound like a robot. No, no. Oh, good. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> good, no, good, I... good. Um, no, I have a question. Have you ever posted a multi-veggie mash on your Instagram? No, but I will. I will. It is I... like a... Easy. I know, especially oh. if you have produce that's going to go bad. Fine. Okay. I feel like we don't need any other tips from you, <laughs> honestly. Like, that's, to me, that is the best tip <laughs> of the day. Tip of the day, you have fresh vegetables that are about to go bad, steam them, mash them, and say that olive oil, salt, and pepper. And it's see, somebody it. does say it's like this. Can you hmm. Uh, or not, not as much. Not as much. Oh, bummer. Okay, hey, maybe should I do my old fashioned headphones? I can hear you now. Is it better? Okay, I do. Anytime that I'm doing hearing stuff like that, all yeah. I think about is that cell phone commercial. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can hear you. I wonder if, if anybody's audio is oh, getting yeah. correctly. Uh, my husband, who's at Urban Bourbonist, uh, and I can't imagine that he was. Were you listening this whole time, Chris? I think I did a. I think I threw under the bus for buying so many black beans. <laughs> um, well, it's better. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Better. Me. Okay. Um. So anyway, I do feel like. We cannot underplay. I think sometimes good ideas come easily to some people and they forget to overplay them. I yeah. like to really overplay this veggie mash and yeah. like say that it's the lesson of the day. Okay. Veggie mash for all. It's, I mean, you can do it with anything. You can mash your, I mean, personally, I think the roots do really nicely together. So like carrots, parsnips, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets, any kind of like, version of that you just steam them till they're like really mushy and then blend them or hand you can use a hand emulsion you know yeah. with yeah. the key is olive oil salt and pepper oh. olive oil salt and pepper that's all you do God bless <laughs> i feel like this is a game changer so anyway i'm going to use that tip i feel like i would like to force you to try some sort of uh fabulous uh coleslaw i will with my with my rice Oh, oh, and, else, and I could also chop this or something and throw it in there, too. Yes, that's uh, the broccoli slaw, cauliflower, rice, and then do you eat eggs? No, I'm, al I'm allergic to those, too. Wah, wah. Yeah, so you, so you basically would just make it taste like a stir-fried rice by using your coconut aminos. Totally, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. You are a fun guest, and actually, it reminds me that it is so fun being dietitian on dietitian. Oh, it's so fun, and I love your tips. Thank you. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? If you are making anything um, that you feel like is a pantry uh, fabulous, uh, make sure you tag me, and I'll repost it on my thing. That's love pantry it. Pantry party. Uh, okay. What's the hashtag? Should I hashtag pantry party? I think so. I think we should okay. start the hashtag. Um, okay. Chris, what, before we leave officially, I would like you to tell everybody where they can find you, and I know you have something going on um, at 1 o'clock, <laughs> wait, 2 o'clock Eastern, Eastern. 1 o'clock Central Time. So tell us where we can find more of your fabulous tips, tricks, and dietary goodness, um, and then where you'll be later uh, in a half hour. So Isabel Smith Nutrition is my Instagram handle. It's long. 
but it just is about Smith nutrition. And then my website's the same thing. So, um, I have a lot of recipes on there. Um, lots of different kinds of blogs with all sorts of different info. We're doing some stuff on allergies right now because it's allergy season. We're not totally entirely focused on COVID-19 because I think we're all going a little bonkers. There's too much info. Um, we love it, but there's a lot. Um, and then I'm going to be talking about poop at two because, <laughs> because I'm hearing that everybody's constipated or that like we're starting to get a little backed up because people aren't moving. We're stressed. So over on my, on my, um, Instagram, we're going to be doing a live at two, um, with a really fun Australian. She's just so fun and she's super smart and loves to talk about poop also so <laughs> uh, well i mean if you do not you literally do not need to sell that that's market itself uh go to uh at isabel smith nutrition all you need to know about poop in a half an hour i mean i feel like that's everybody crazy. poops uh, it, it, it is true everybody does it they should write a book about that i mean they, they do and it's, it's out there uh, so thank you so much. I love thank you so much. You. Uh, I love you too. We'll be uh, communicating a ton on the Instagram yeah. because um, we're always on together. It's right. a couple hours of the day and night. Don, I can't um, sleep. <laughs> I know. Hey, and I will tell you this. I am going to life change veggie dish. Love it. Let me know what you make. The, I made last night easy, simple, plain cauliflower mash. And it was just like, that was the only ingredient plus olive oil, salt, and pepper. So good. Love it. So Love good. you so much. Um, Love you too. Stay safe. Have a great rest of the day. I wish you good luck. Lots of vibes. Lots of vibes. Good one. <laughs> Bye. 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 That was a, such a fun interaction seeing a New York City pantry, fridge, and freezer. She had so much fresh food in there. I, I really had to ask her, you know, are you getting anxious and do you have a plan for all that? And she seemed like, you know, had her go to soups, her go to juices. And then gave us that mind-blowing idea. I mean, I've made cauliflower mash before. Like, doy. Like, I know that. But, like, not thinking about all the other vegetables you could throw in there and mash. I mean, at first I was like, why would you eat all those mashed veggies? Like, it sounds sort of like baby food. But then if you think about it, it's like mashed potatoes. Then all of a sudden it starts becoming, you know, like I said, life-changing. So, anyway, hope you got some great tips. I love that we got to see products and hear from a dietitian. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we have uh, somebody lined up uh, who's Rosie. Uh, she is going to be uh, a fun guest. Uh, she is really a, like a life coach, and she'll tell us more about what she does. Uh, and we'll get to have a sneak peek, obviously, because it's pantry party. We'll have a sneak peek in her pantry, uh, fridge, and freezer and strategize with her of some stuff that she can make. Uh, and then um, we have Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week also already booked. So uh, I hope that you're blocking your calendar, man, for this pantry party at noon Central Standard Time, Monday through Friday, because this is really a show. I mean, if you do three of something, it's legit. And as I said, I'm getting more legit by the second because I even have a mini disco ball for this show. So... Anyway, I can't thank you enough for joining in the Pantry Party Show. We'll be here tomorrow at noon Central Standard Time with Rosie. And uh, until next time, I'm wishing you lots of big love and very high immunity vibes. Kisses.